All right, let's check the feed real quick. Just start over here. All right, Con, let me check my phone as well. Okay, it just it just popped up on my phone and I'm waiting to see the feed here. All right, Shalom, we live. Shalom, Shalom out there. Shalom. Shalom. All right, Shalom, Shalom. Hey, we are the brothers of Great Millstone, Charlotte. Special guest, Isaiah GMS Raleigh in the house. All right. Shalom. You know, we're going to bring this lesson out. Bear with us. Shalom. All right. So, yeah, before we get started with this lesson, this live lesson, we want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham. Bahasham. A double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us his truth. Double salutations to all you Akim out there laboring in the house of David, the elect, that's pushing his word with all truth, righteousness, and sincerity. Shalom to you, brothers, shalom. and shalom to the elect. Back with another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit of Rakakwadash. We pray that this lesson is informative and also edifying. All right. Now, um, you know, before we get into this thing. Um, you know, just kind of land back in the spirit, you know, brothers have been doing heavy lessons going into the time of persecution, um, Donald Trump and the things that he said on the panel concerning the anti, you know, what, which the, all these things are being geared towards the Bible, the prophets, you know, the, uh, demonization of this truth. All right. The times of, uh, of heavy trouble, man, you see what I'm saying? And, uh, before we even get into that topic, just wanted to talk about, you know, the subliminals that have been put out here for some time now. Um, I actually saw this probably a few days ago. This is, uh, this is, I guess this is from the cover. Yeah. It says May 27, 2024. All right. So this is from the cover here of, of time. All right. Now I guess this is, this is about to come out or whatever the case is, but it says if he wins right now, they've been talking about this for a long time that, it could be a possibility that he can he could not win. Uh, there could be a possibility of not having the elections. So there's a lot of heavy, you know, subliminals that Esau's putting out here that, you know, coming into this time that, you know, something between now and then can can really go down. You know what I'm saying? And um, just make my point. Right. Just to go into that. Let me play this video real fast because it says if he wins. Right. Now, check this out. Hey, want to hear some fucked up shit? Alexa, who will win the next American election? The 2024 American election will not take place. There will be no winner. War Powers Resolution of 1973 or the War Powers Act will be invoked by the act of war with Russia and China. Once it invoked, the standing party will retain and remain in power. Right, so let's play that again. So, you know, this Alexa device said that there will be no election. You know, and there's going to be a war with China and Russia and they're going to have to enact certain uh, executive laws. All right. So who's to say that a scenario such as this, you know, uh, can play out? You know, let's play it again. Hey, want to hear some fucked up shit? Alexa, who will win the next American election? The 2024 American election will not take place. There will be no winner. War Powers Resolution of 1973 or the War Powers Act will be invoked by the act of war with Russia and China. Once it invoked, the standing party will retain and remain in power. You see? Now, that's why I said, you know, we just, hey, we watch everything, man. So you never know what's going to happen between now and then. All right. Here's another point, And I'll let you brothers chime in. But it says. This came out on May 8th, 20, uh, May 8th, 2024. It says in six months, we'll know if we still have a country because there was a statement that Trump had said. He said if he if he doesn't make it in office, America's pretty much going to be done. You know, and we know that these patriotic, you know, right wing Edomites are ready to pretty much, you know, take America back by violence, man. So you really don't know. You know what I'm saying? These are some very heavy times, a lot of speculation, rumors of war, so on and so forth. But you brothers can chime in, you know. I wanted to just uh, speak on the whole Trump situation because, as we see, in, he's a major pawn that Esau is using, all right, to pretty much sow the discord, all right, sow division, pretty much everything that he's been saying and doing over the past few years, 
has been stirring up the spirit in America that's leading towards all out confusion and, and pretty much, you know, people being at each other's throat, man. And it's coincidental because we always talk about that, but we don't bring it up anymore. But the, the Illuminati car game, he actually has a car in that game. Right. And that his car, it says, uh, enough is enough. Right. So it's just kind of funny that this, uh, the, the, the video that he, you know, he spoke about, we're going to talk about in a minute, where he said, you know, bring him back the death penalty. And that's that's what that sounds like. Enough is enough. All right. We're tired of these, these, uh, these people talking about anti sim. So the, the proper, uh, punishment for that is just kill him, you know. So I just thought that that was kind of ironic, man. Right. I had a, a quick precept. This is Second Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven. It says, "Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices, because we know this nigga's a pawn, just as right. Biden and everybody else that you see on the TV, man. All right, because the as you are hearing these uh these people speaking lately, it's clear that they're you know, uh, puppets for the elites, man. Right. And I, I, I was going to send it to the group chat earlier, but you would just look up, you know, Trump and Biden, how they're uh, small hat supporters. They, they go off to the land of Israel, had a little yarmulkes on their head, yep. they bound to those small hats. So they're, they're puppets, man. Yep. So we're not, we're not uh, surprised at what this nigga's doing. All right. He has the job to do just like we do. Exactly. He's a puppet for the elites, man. And, and see, they set him up. To portray him to be against the so-called establishment you know like he's really about america first making america great again that they set him up to be that hero you know what i'm saying that cult of personality we'll get that in a second as well you see that but but pretty much as we get into the point like you said earlier going into him saying you know we got to stop anti you know what he's basically declared who he really stands for you know he's bought and paid for just like biden man they're all puppets they're all set up to fulfill certain agendas, man. All right. You had some Isaiah? Uh I do have a precept, but I wanted to mention uh that enough is enough, you know, that's the kind of energy he's coming in, you know, rallying the people. Like exactly. we 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 we're having enough with people coming and still in our jobs. We're having enough with the high inflation. Mm -hmm. You know, the the too much money you're paying for your taxes. So he that's how he's rallying the people as uh brothers have, you know, in the spirit talking about how the Lord is really putting the spirit on Esau to bring a squeeze to society for them to beg for a new system, you know, right. to beg for beg for some type of change. Something has to give in his, uh, we all know Esau even was setting up this uh, pseudo uh, salvation for the people, which is the MOT to the B uh, system, the NWO. And Trump is being mm -hmm. used as the faith to bring all that. That's why yep. they're pushing so much to bring the narrative that he's the answer. Yeah. Right, right. I'm gonna read a little. Oh, go ahead, Slocky. Go ahead. Just a quick brief. So this is uh Second Ezra four and thirty seven. By measure have he measured the times, and by number have he numbered them. He did not move nor stir them until the said measures be fulfilled. Mm. So right now we're just seeing you know the beginning process, the beginning stages of Jacob's trouble. Yep. You know, right. a time like none other, the Lord is stirring things up in the earth. And, and starting with the apostle, that was a great millstone. We've been warning you about this time. We've been warning you about, you know, the coming persecution, how Esau was going to eventually roll on you Israelites, you know, us as a whole, and to prepare your mind for these times that we're coming into, as uh, the title is, right? Uh, the trial of your faith is, is coming up The coming in the coming persecution. That's right. That's right. I want to read this real quick. Uh, just this quick paragraph, and I'm going to grab some precepts, but it says in six months, we'll know if we still have a country. All right. So they're putting a lot of they're putting a lot of pressure upon this uh, this 2024 election, man. So this thing could definitely be it right here, as we've been saying all year. Right. And if I may add just real quick, because, you know, yep. how Trump, you know, dealing with the etymology of his name, you know, he's the Trump card. Right. You know, so these are the elites are, you know, using this man once again. And uh, also. With the uh, border crisis, I believe in uh, 2020, you know, uh, back when he was first elected, you know, what was it, 2016, mm -hmm. uh, an article came out dealing with how, uh, you know, foreigners are illegals should have what the micro CF inside of them, right? Mm -hmm. This was back during his first election. So all these things are resurfacing once again. That's right. Heavy. That's heavy. It says, in less than six months, 
the country will be faced with another presidential election. In normal times, we have a proper degree of concern. We wouldn't be thinking we were facing a near existential, ex existential uh, threat. In other words, we wouldn't be so anxious, full of dread and scared to death about the routine changing of the guard. Evidently, we, are, we all know this election represents something bigger that, than that much weightier, all right? It says, it's all on the line for America this time. We have a fundamental choice in 2024, one more chance to make things right. What is it, right? So you can see like in the spirit that there, people are really banking on this election to really bring America back, you know, to really restore America for once it used to be. But as the scriptures tell us, there is no healing of Babylon, man. So mm -hmm. as we saw in the video with the Alexa and all of that and all the subliminals, if he wins and in the next six months, we'll know if we still have a country. They're preparing the people for something uh, major to go down. Right. Real quick. This is Jeremiah 51 and 46. It says, unless your heart faint and you fear for the rumor that should be heard in the, in the land, a rumor should both come one year. And after that, in another year shall come a rumor and violence in the land ruler against ruler so right now we're hearing about what the uh, uh the rumors man you know things things that, that could potentially happen if, if if trump isn't put in office if, if these so-called americans don't get what they want you know they're, they're they're expecting chaos violence things to pretty much you know uh uh explode if you will now just to add on to that real quick and then we'll get to the main point of the lesson but it says here, it says, uh, this came out March 23rd, 2024, so two months ago. So it says, it will be bedlam how Trump is creating conditions for a post-election eruption, right? As Preachy was saying earlier, they got this guy set up to pretty much invoke those spirits, man, to incite that, uh, that, that, that riot, that violence amongst the people, the sedition. Man. So it says, I looked up this word bedlam, right? So it says the definition of bedlam, it says a situation, a place of situation of noisy uproar and confusion. It says an insane asylum. <laughs> and that's yeah, America. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Priest. You got it? No, I was agreeing with you. That's, I was on uh, the etymology. It's saying the same thing. God. It says similar, a madhouse. <laughs> yep. It says an insane person, a lunatic, a madman. It says any place where uproar and confusion prevail. It says a place or situation of chaotic uproar and where confusion prevails. It says a state of extreme confusion and disorder. You see that? So this is what they're saying. You see how many you see how this is all in the media? You know how they how they're pushing that spirit of, of civil war and sedition, you know? Yeah, but that's that's prophecy at the end of the day, because this Con. is one of the signs that Yahweh Shah warned us of of his return. If I can get that real quick. You got it. This is um, Matthew 24. I'm going to start at verse 3. It says, And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach. And mm -hmm. shall deceive many, and that's what Trump is coming in. Mm -hmm. All right, Trump is being set up to be that false messiah for a lot of these dumbass Americans that believe he can save this country, man. You know, so you got all these people, you know, preparing to to vote Trump back in the office, and it's mainly our people that's putting up the most, you know, uh, the most talk about that. You see that blacks for Trump and all that other stupid shit, man. You know, huh. because they they think that he's he's the answer. He's the he's the, the, the going to be the reason. Things go back to normal, but he's a pawn, man, as we've been saying. Yep. yep. So verse six, it says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And that's what we're talking about, right? Hey, the rumors of civil war are becoming louder and louder. That's right. right. It's almost like, like we said, they're predicting this to happen because yep. we know Esau has a script that he's going off of. All right, which really Yahweh by Shemel Shah is giving him a script to do, all right, which is to bring disorder all throughout the country. This is yeah. why you have everybody at each other's throats, man. That's it. That's it. I'm going to actually read that and grab a scripture on it. So reading this article here, it will be Bedlam, how Trump is creating conditions for a post-election eruption, right? 
which is prophecy. It says a bloodbath, the end of democracy, riots in the streets, mm -hmm. bedlam in the country. Donald Trump has made apocalyptic imagery a defining future of his presidential election campaign, warning supporters that if he does not win and avoid criminal prosecution, the U.S. will enter the U.S. will enter its death throes. You see, as we've been prophesying unto you, what's, what's going to happen to this place? It says the prophecies of doom, right? Yeah. <laughs> the prophecies of doom repeated ad nauseum at rallies on social media have raised fears that former that the former president is making an electoral tinderbox that can explode in November. And uh, while there. If I may add, you mentioned something about subliminals and mm -hmm. them putting these. I, I got a quote real quick I want to read. Um, it says, words have power and how much you believe in those words determine how much power those words have over your life. Come so on. people are reading these things and they're giving power to them, right? And with them, you know, these words now having power over them, it makes them move in the anxious you know fearful type of manner so um, now everyone is hearing about these things and esau is playing a lot of deception as well you know mm -hmm. who knows who's what's going to happen in the coming months but a lot of feet a lot of uh, propaganda and fear is being pushed out and that's why you know if things don't go their way that's going to cause them to react in a certain manner so, and a lot of hasty and uh, unthinking manner. That's why we're watching uh, these movies leave the world behind. Civil War. It's almost like you know the Lord Esau wants to you know the Lord's putting the spirit on Esau to make these movies, you know, uh, to kind of prophesy and make his vision clear what he wants society to be like in the coming future. That's exactly exactly what like because. What's that uh the term you were talking about? I always bring out dealing with Hollywood was uh, with oh the revelation, Re yeah, revelation of the method. Yeah, so that's exactly what the brother just said, man. Because it, that's part of their Luciferian doctrine is to pretty much put out there what they're about to do before they do it, so that they're not held guilty, you know, in, in so many words, man. So they they the left hand, you know, that's their promise, man. They do that, you know, to show forth what they want. All right. But I wanted to uh, touch on something that you read. Can you read that part again about the uh, the death throes? It says, <clears throat> it says a bloodbath, the end of democracy, riots in the streets, bedlam in the country. Donald Trump has made an apocalyptic imagery, a defining future, future in his presidential election campaign, warning supporters if he does not win and avoid criminal prosecution, the U.S. will enter its death throes. All right, so when you look up this word death throes, it says from uh, Britannica, it says the violent movements and noises that are sometimes made by a person who is about to die. Hmm. It says, hmm. or when they're in the final stages of dying, it can also refer to the final stage of something's destruction. Ooh. So, so basically, he's he's gearing the mind of the people, look, either I got to win or we're going to have to fight and take over. You know, his supporters, that's pretty much what he's saying. America's going to die if I don't win. You know, are you, yeah. are you ready to fight for the country? Exactly. You know? Exactly what it is, man. I'm going to read on. Preach, you got some more? That was it. Con, I'm going to read on. It says, the prophecies of doom repeated nauseam at rallies and on social media. Yeah, because he's all over the country, you know, doing his, uh, you know, his, uh, his meetings and stuff like that, you know, trying to get that, uh, that vote. It says, "Oh, it's like have, if I can add to your point too, because remember, oh. <clears throat> with him doing all this right now too, what's all what's all going on with him? He's still having those uh those different trials that he they're trying to lock him up for, which is just further damn antihero." Yep, exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. We gonna get into that, man. Same thing with Nero. <clears throat> it says, "It says the prophecies of doom, repeated ad nauseum at rallies and on social media, have raised fears that the former president is making an, elect an electoral tinderbox that can explode in November. It says, while there has been much commentary assessing the implications of a Trump win, some experts warn that a Trump defeat could provide an equally 
severe stress test of American democracy. See, it says, <clears throat> quote, regardless of whether Donald Trump wins or loses, there's going to be violence, says Michael Fanwon, a retired police officer who was seriously injured by pro-Trump rioters at the U.S. Capitol on the 6th of Jan 2021. Quote, if Donald Trump loses, he's not going to concede. He's going to inspire people to commit acts of violence, just like he did in the weeks and months leading up to January 6, 2021. So, right. hey, read between the lines, man. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So right. everything, every this is all speculation. But at the same time, hey, we got to watch and we got to warn, right? Because they put it all out there, the, the articles. The video we just watched from Alexa, hey, there's a pot, there's a great possibility if this shit could go down, man. The Lord willing, it does, right? Let me grab one more, or two more. Yeah. I got a precept whenever you're after you. Okay, Con, this is Ezekiel chapter seven and verse twenty five. It says, "Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there should be none." Right? Because that people actually think that things are going to go back to how they used to be. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're in a time of what? Pursuing the Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. We're in a time of hate and a time of war, man. Mm -hmm. And all these things are being declared right now, first and foremost, by the spirit of Yahweh Shema Washah that's coming forth from the prophets. It says, verse 26, mischief shall come upon mischief and rumor shall be upon rumor. They shall seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priests and counsel from the ancients. Yeah, because we coming into a time of the famine of the word. You know, you're not going to you're not going to seek a vision from the uh, uh, from the prophets, man. The prophets are going to be out of the way. We're coming into the time of martial law, uh, economic uh, collapse. You know, the transition of this man's uh, um, uh, global empire man, to a digital one. So times are heavy, Jake. You know, it says verse 27. The king shall mourn and the prince shall be clothed with desolation and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. Now, this is dealing with Israel. But you can apply this to Babylon as well. OK, when things don't turn out like if like when things don't turn out as expected, all hell's about to break loose, man. All right. It says I will do unto them after their way and according to their desserts. Will I will I judge them and they should know that I am the Lord. You have by Shai. You see, you got it, brother. <laughs> God, this is um, St. Luke 12 and 51. Suppose ye that I'm come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. That's right. You know, so, you know, some people support, you know, this idea of, you know, rallying and, you know, taking back, you know, the power from, you know, the elites, you know, the, the, the rulers of darkness of this world. You know, some people believe that this is extreme, you know, uh, and that's going to cause a lot of division within, you know, America and with right. division. You know, the times we're coming into, you know, uh, no, there's no more a uh, rationale thinking and talking out problems. You know, people are going to take it to the streets, you know, and right. fight for what they believe in. Ooh. Gone. Gone. Second Ezra 15 real quick, and then we'll move on to the point. We just wanted to address, you know, the possibility of, of you know, civil war breaking out and the elections not happening and. What's going to happen if Trump is not in there, whether he wins or loses, you know, it's just very heavy, man. It's all spiritual. I have something but this is too. You got to go ahead, Priest. Con, this is, uh, what was you going to start at second edges? I was going to start at the top and then jump down to uh, verse, what, 14 on down? Okay, yeah, go ahead then. I was, was going to go to that. Okay, Con, so this is uh, second edges chapter 15. In verse 1 in the reads, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai. It says, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. All right, as we see. All right, the, the, the prophecies that are written are faithful and true. All right. It says, for it says, Fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. That's why we said, man, hey, you not believing does nothing, man. <laughs> It really doesn't matter, especially at this point, man. This thing's about to go down, right? So like it says here in verse 4, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. That's it, right? You don't believe you're going to perish, man. It's, 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 and ultimately, that's on you anyway. 
All right. Yep. Cause you were given, you were given the understanding, you were given a warning. All right. You were told to repent, to turn back to your power, but you refused to take heed to the Lord's counsel. Mm -hmm. Right. It says verse five, behold, say of the Lord, Shai, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And all these things are in sight, man. Okay. They're on the table. It says, for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So now the Lord is really about to bring forth action. All right. This is what we're telling our people. This is what we're warning them of. All right. And I wanted to jump down unless you guys want to chime in, but uh, I'll jump down. Can I read uh, just a precept and I'll, I'll make a point. This is St. Uh, Mark 13, 37. And what I say, I say unto all watch, you know, because um, really, uh, like we were mentioning before the camera came on, you know, so many distractions, you know, are being pushed forth. You know, uh, this, the, the thing with the uh, TikTok and YouTube shorts, all these things so they're really to flood your mind with information for you have an information overload. Mm -hmm. And it yep. makes it in uh, uh, those little YouTube shorts, those little small reels, they uh, they uh, your focus. You, you were talking about that. They really mm -hmm. stunt your focus to where it's hard to focus on what's important. So exactly. no one's really focusing on, you know, the bigger picture and what's going on with America. Everyone is living, you know, this dream of social media. That's why there's so many influencers about you can still do it. The American dream is not dead. All this flood of information is distract all distractions. All right. of a sudden Absolutely. distract the masses of the people. Right. Because just to add to what you're saying, because if people really took a step, you know, back and really looked at the way society really is compared to how it's making it seem like, they would see everything's finished. And that's what oh. Trump is telling these Americans because these these Edomites that are truly into them, them politics and shit, they see exactly what Trump is saying. They believe everything that he's saying full forward. This is why if he yep. don't win, this very well could see civil war breaking out because Esau has allowed Biden to fuck this country up so bad to where they're ready to they're ready to go to fight if he loses mm -hmm. if, if Trump loses, man. So exactly this this is getting real, man. This is why, like the brother said, we're supposed to be watching, man. Like the scriptures say, man, we're supposed to be watching as well as praying, man, because the days is evil, man. They, we see it coming. Yeah. Uh, you, you go ahead, I'll lock you. Nah, so, so I can't, bro. And um, I was just meant, I was just thinking about through the spirit. You know, that's what these movies, like that movie, um, don't don't look up the yep. um, the movie dealing with the um, the meteor that was going to hit the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just a, an enchantment that in that movie, don't look up, don't look up. You know, what everyone everyone's looking into their screens all the day. Right. You know, no one's looking up at reality and really seeing what's going on. Like brother saying, you gotta be praying because those enchantments, those vibrations and frequencies to keep everyone distracted, you know, that can affect you if you ain't uh connected with Yahweh by Shema Shai in prayer, you know. That's right. the last thing that for that, that point of that movie, it also showed how everybody's stupid. Like people in that movie was extremely stupid and clueless what was going on, and everything was being shown that look, everybody about to die if you niggas don't figure out what the hell is about to go on. This is the same situation that's going on now. The prophets are out here letting it be known what's about to happen, but nobody's regarding us as telling the truth. So they want to hear from all these other people what you said on distraction, mm -hmm. which is going to lead them to be getting destroyed. That shows. Yeah. That shows forth that those words of those false prophets and these false, you know, leaders have power over their life. Right. You know, but That's you really got it. No, nah, I was just making the point what you said earlier. You know, Trump has been set up as a um, as a as a false savior for America, man. Which yeah. goes into what we may mention about that code of personality, yep. right? Let me read that real quick. So this is the definition of code of personality, which Donald Trump is. All right. It says. A cult of personality or a cult of the leader is the result of an effort which is made to create an idolized and heroic image of a glorious leader, often through unquestioning flattery and praise. <clears throat> it says historically it has developed through techniques of mass media propaganda, spectacle, the arts, patriotism, right? And government organized demonstrations and rallies. And what do you see Trump at? He's all at these rallies. 
He's all at these uh, government organized demonstrations. That, you know, he's pushing this whole American uh, patriotism, you know. So he's the guy that's going to bring America back. You know, everybody else, you know, in, in the eyes of these so-called uh, Babylonians, these Americans, you know, fucked America. But this is, you know, Trump is the guy that's going to set it back right, you know. So this, <laughs> right. this is definitely this is definitely this guy, man. But anyway, right. Finishing this out. You have some eyes out? No, nah, bring it out. This is uh, uh, Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. So this is basically what Trump has been set up to incite. He's been set up to incite, you know, civil war, basically, man. You know, all hell breaking through the streets of, of America, right? It says... For there should be sedition among men, you know, riots, uproars, confusion, as we read that definition of, of what was it called? Uh, Bedlam. Bedlam. Right. We read that. It said a place where uproar, confusion prevail, uh, a place or situation of chaotic uproar and where confusion prevails, a state of extreme confusion and disorder. See. Right. So going back. Second, Ezra 15 and 16, it says, for, for there should be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings, their princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Right. Because once once this shit goes down, once people don't get what they want, it's going to be total lawlessness, man. All right. And people are going to take matters in their own hands. You're going to have martial law. You're going to have various militia groups uh, roaming the streets. You know, people getting killed out in the streets is going to be chaotic. It mm -hmm. says a man's desire, a man should desire to go into a city. And should not be able, right? Going back to basically what cities being shut down, martial law, roadblocks, you know, things are gonna happen. It says, Can I can I make a point on that? You got it. Um, because it uh verse 17, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Why? Because in this part of the city, you know, it's gonna be taken over by you know, people who want, you know, like you said, Trump to be in office and this part of the city is going to be a safe haven against those that are not down with the NWO. Right. Yep. And you see that, you know, that theme in a lot of these apocalyptic type movies where you got what they call factions of different, you know, people that believe in different things. And right. like I said, if you're not down with their particular faction, you won't be able to enter into that as well as we know that this. The, the country is going to be divided up into different, I think, with the 10 FEMA zones. Right. So yeah. you ain't going to be able to, you know, leave your city, man. All right. Like in that movie, song, I think it was Songbird. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Contagious. I've never seen that one. Okay. Kind of, that's just one. But um, yeah. you got that. So it says, um, Second Ezra's, Second Ezra's 15 and 18, it says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. It says, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right. That's what's that's what's coming down the pipe. Great tribulation, a time like no other, man. So Laura willing, man, you know, Yahweh Shemel Shah uses this devil to set this shit off. All right. Well, this is what we all waiting for in the spirit anyway. All right. Because as the scriptures say, as prophecy states. America's done for, man. All right. Babylon is through. You see? So we just wanted to point that out that hey man, between now and then, hey, shit can get uh shit can get real funky. <laughs> yeah. I got right? something for you real quick. You got it, brother. Isaiah 24 and 10. It says the city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened and the mirth of the land gone. And that's that's the state that America is in. And it's only going to continue to get worse because this is the city of confusion. All right. And everything is pretty much breaking down, man. And this is why Trump is being held as the savior. That's going to bring everything back to the form of glory that it once had. But we know that uh -huh. that's a farce. All right. It says. Yeah. And we also understand so it's controlled demolition. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It says for every house is shut up that no man may come in. It says there is a crying for wine in the streets because when that when that day happens, fully people are going to want the true answers, but the prophets are going to be off the scene at that point. So uh -huh. you're not going to be able to get the true answers that what you're seeking for. 
Yeah, because um, that priest will be read, and Ezra said, because of thy pride, thy city shall be troubled. Yeah. You know, the pride of thinking that this place was going to continue on forever, and that the words of the Lord weren't going to come to pass. Right. Kind of. Things are going to get so bad out here, like I said. People are going to be, you know, uh, you know, shut up in their house. Because they, they you won't have to guard your house in case people are going to break in there, steal your goods, try to take your wife, try to take you, you know. It's going to be total mayhem out here, anarchy, you know, once this shit really pops off, man. Sick. All right? Sick. It says, there's a, uh, there's a crime for wine in the streets. All joy is dark and the, the mirth of the land is gone. And this place is done. Ain't no mirth here anymore, man. Everything is washed up, man. The music trash. The sports is trash. The movies is trash. Everything about America is dried up, man. That's how That's we know good. that this shit is done. Yeah, so, when you're, like, you know, difference, like, when you have a bad day here in Babylon, you can just go to your devices and be distracted from the, your problems. Right. You know, but we're coming to a time where there isn't going to be any more distractions from your problems. There isn't going to be any comfort from the system. Yep. You know, that's why, uh, you know, and uh, during the time of Israel, you know, uh, when there was that famine, you know, those two women, you know, uh, what they had, one had a... Uh, they had uh, committed cannibalism for their kids, right? And the other one had hit their kid, mm -hmm. hit their uh, hit their child, not kids, Lafia. And um, the king said, came crying to the woman. And he said, if if I if the Lord don't help thee, how can I help thee? Right. You know, out of the storage houses, you know, out, out of the barn doors, there's a famine going on. Good. You know, and if the Lord Yahweh by Shema Shai. You know, the guy of the Bible, the guy of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, uh, who's Jacob, you so-called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, you know, the Lord ain't on your side, you're going to be finished out here, you're going to be given up to the wiles of the devil. Wow. Uh, heavy, brother, you know. So pretty much that's it, you know, on, on that, this point, you know, we wanted to address once again, you know, the potential of uh, this thing really collapsing, Lord willing, between these next six months, but hey, this is all speculation. This is all the rumors of wars, the scriptures we just read. You know, you should hear a rumor and a rumor in another year. Great violence and, and destruction in the, in the land, you see. Right. But, um, you know, transitioning to the main point of this lesson here. All right. Because once again, this is news and prophecy, Trump and the coming persecution of our faith. So we want to talk about that. You know, the elder brothers have basically killed it, man. They, they, they did some very heavy lessons going into this uh, this article here. <clears throat> which it says the headline it says trump says death penalty death penalty a proper punishment for anti you you know what in america man so um just kind of wanted to briefly touch over this again let's let's play this video and priest you know you can add in there mm -hmm. right but let's play the video of what trump said and we'll uh you know we'll add to it this evil anti-semitic attack is an assault on all of us. It's an assault on humanity. It will require all of us working together to extract the hateful poison of anti-Semitism from our world. This was an anti-Semitic attack at its worst. The scourge of anti-Semitism cannot be ignored, cannot be tolerated, and it cannot be allowed to continue. We can't allow it to continue. It must be confronted and condemned everywhere. It rears its very ugly head. We must stand with our Jewish brothers and sisters to defeat anti-Semitism and vanquish the forces of hate. That's what it is. Through the centuries, the Jews have endured terrible persecution, and you know that. We've all read it. We've studied it. They've gone through a lot. And those seeking their destruction, we will seek their destruction. And when you have crimes like this, whether it's this one or another one on another group, we have to bring back the death penalty. They have to pay the ultimate price. They have to pay the ultimate price. They can't do this. They can't do this to our country. We must draw a line in the sand and say very strongly, 
never again. Right. So as you heard everything in this video, Trump is pretty much letting you know who he stands for, man. OK, as we may mention earlier. Right. These uh, uh, these presidential candidates are nothing but puppets for the elite, man. And people now have have come to the realization that, look, it doesn't matter what political party you stand for. All right. Both both sides play for this play for the same team, man. All right. So he's basically declared who he's with. And also he's declared war against us. You see that? Because all of these laws and decrees is geared towards what? The Bible and, and the true prophets of Yahweh by Shema was shy. And Esau is ready to roll with that great persecution and demonization of this truth. Right. You see? So th these are the times we're in. You got it, priest. You want to add in there? Con, this is Revelation 13 and 11 off the point you just said about, you know, both of these can both of these president uh, presidential candidates, they all play for the same team. Con. Revelation 13 and 11, and I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, we know this was the Roman Empire, but we know this is Rome reincarnated. And they're mm -hmm. going by the same playbook as ancient Rome, because back then you had the plebeians and the patricians. And in today's time, you have the Dem, the Democrats and the Republicans. But like right. I said, Trump and Biden both are puppets for the elites, man. All right. As you mentioned earlier, you can just go on Google and you see both of them paying homage to those small hats when they go and visit the land of Israel, man. You know? yep. So all this is just showing you. As we said earlier, that Illuminati card, enough is enough, man. Trump is, is, is speaking exactly what these small hats want to be said, okay? Yep. So like, just like we were saying, these these people, their back is against the wall. They're tired of being called out. And the main ones that they're, that they're talking to and that message that he was saying is us, the prophets, man, all right? The true huh. Israelites, man, all right? Because we bring out the truth of the matter that they are not the chosen people. And that Yahweh Bashim al Shah is coming back to destroy them and their kingdom, man. Yeah. Yep. And if I may add, you know, we understand that because we're on the front lines. But when mm -hmm. you go to these other states, these red states, you know, it's almost like a whole. When you travel from state to state, it's almost it's very different culture. Very, it's it's very it's same America, but the people there can be, you know, uh, like you have the Bible Belt. So it's a, it's different beliefs as in, you know, America promotes what freedom of religion. So people are migrating to these different areas and that's why you have red states, you have blue states. So the vision has always been there. So now yeah. they're really pushing upon these beliefs because these people believe that uh, those uh, you wish people are really the people. You know, they really believe that if they don't support them, America is going to die. America is going to fail because they believe in uh, the white man, J uh, JC, right? At the same time, I've got a lot of these Americans waking up to the fact that they're the problem. Like that lesson we did uh, mm -hmm. about a month or two back where it says, what, like 90-something percent of, of uh, Americans believe that, you know, they say white people are evil, but we know who they meant. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so that's... That division is tearing this country apart, man. It's all there. Even in their own fashions, they're going to find division. Um, so everything is just divided here. It's going to be really everyone for themselves. That's why we have Yahweh by Shema in the in the body. We're the, through the spirit of the Lord, you know, the believers of Yahweh by Shema are, are the only ones united. Right. Um, so the point here is that, you know, this devil is getting ready to come down upon us with great wrath. All right. And I want to grab a couple of scriptures real quick because we're in the time of what of the trial of our faith. And he's just basically declared that. And you see the laws that have been coming into the effect over the past you know, week or so dealing with this, the uh, the you know who's right. Where it's to the point where you can't say anything about them. And now Trump is pushing the whole campaign of, of the death penalty and firing squad and all of that, which we'll get in a second here. But I want to make some points to these scriptures. Right. So this is. um. This is Psalm 94 and verse 14. It says, For the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shah, will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Right? It says, But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. And that's what's going on right now, man. Our people really dealing with the remnant, the elect. All right. They're turning back to righteousness, man. 
All right, they're coming back to the to 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 the truth. You see that? And it says all the uh, all it says all the upright in heart shall follow it, right? It says the point verse 16 it says who will rise up for me against evil doors, who was or who will stand up for me against the workers of, of iniquity. And that's the prophets, man. The prophets of Yahweh Shemel Shah are the only ones that are standing up that are speaking against the uh the wickedness that's pretty much perpetuated throughout the society. All right? Revealing and exposing the wicked through the Holy Spirit. All right. Those are the men that are doing that. All right. And this is why Esau is prepared to go to war against us. Right. It says, verse 17, right. it says, unless the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shah, had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. It says, when my it says, when I said, my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shah, help me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by law? And that's what's going on right now, pretty much in this um, article that was read by, you know, various brothers. You know, this man is framing mischief by law, right? To the point where you can't say anything about those that, who, uh, that, are, that are in power. You see that? And this is this is what he's doing. He's cut. He's using these decrees to pretty much, you know, cover his ass. But we're in the point of, of of great exposure of this devil, and this is why everything is crashing down upon him, right? All right. Real quick, something for you. Yeah. Isaiah twenty nine twenty one. It says that make in a make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, mm -hmm. and turn aside the just for a thing of not. You got it. Yeah, so that's exactly what you were saying. All right, man. This this man is setting up all these wicked legislations, all right, to, to pretty much, you know, come against all those that speak out against these small heads, man. So right. the, the simple fact of acknowledging all the sins that this man has committed against the Israelites and the world, all right, we're liable to be uh pretty much put in jail or or killed, as as he's saying now, man. All for just telling the truth on this man. Because as, as you know, we see that anti-sin bill is ultimately trying to ban the Bible. So if you believe in the scriptures, now you're going to be persecuted because that, go, that goes against the narrative of the small hats, man. Heavy. Con. I'm going to finish it out here. It says Psalm 94, verse 21. It says, they gather themselves. <clears throat> excuse me. It says, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous, right? And who is this? This is Esau, starting with the elites, all right? They gather themselves together against the souls of the righteous, all right? The elect. All right. It says, and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai, is my defense and my power is the rock of my refuge. Right. So in the midst of all of this is happening, hey, the Lord, he's going to defend somebody. <laughs> <laughs> he's going he's going to be with somebody. You see what I'm saying? And this is our faith at the end of the day. No matter what laws come down, no, no matter what this man does. All right. The Lord is going to be the defense of his people, of the of the elect. That remnant it says, verse 23, and he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord, Yahweh Shema Washa, our power shall cut them off. And see, these devils know that. This is why, pursuing the revelation, what 12 and 12, they have to come down with great wrath because they know that they have a short time. All right. They know they're about to get cut off. They see that they, 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 they can see that they're losing their power, they're losing their kingdom, you know. That transition is happening. Esau is the end of the world, man. You see, I got one more to add in there, right? Uh, this is Psalms 59. <clears throat> it's a quick precept. So this is Psalms 59 in verse uh, one, and it reads, it says, it says, deliver me from my enemies, O my power, defend me from them that rise up against me, Right? Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men, right? That's going back to these devils, man. All right, it says, for lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me. Who's the mighty? Going back to the elites of this world, the powers that be, okay? Isaiah 13 and 2, this word has gone up to the gates of the nobles, the princes, the nobility of the planet Earth, the small hats. It says, the mighty are gathered against me. Not for my transgressions, nor for my sin, O Lord, Yahweh Hashem, I was shy. Verse 4, they run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me, and behold, you see that? So 
at the end of the day, we're going to trust in Yahweh Hashem Yahushua regardless, man. All right? Because as we say all the time, when Esau decides to finally make that move, we know that Yahweh Hashem Yahushua is going to be in the midst. You see? So major things are prepared to go down. I got a couple more, unless you brothers had a precept. Um, all right? Just a quick one. This is um, Psalms uh, 27 and 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his chamber shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. That's right. You know, we understand that rock is uh, Yahweh Shai, that solid foundation that we are building upon. All of this information, the insights of this man's plans and what he's really uh, bringing to the planet Earth is allowing us to prepare, you know, our spirits and to gather up uh, faith for a treasure, you know, that we may uh, cash out during the times that we're coming into during the times of trouble. Right. You know, so it's very important, you know, for our brothers to stay tapped in to what's going on in the world because the cares and the fears of this life you know, uh, choke the word out of you and you become what? Unfruitful. Right. Come. And I want to just add to what both of y'all are saying because it's a, these scriptures, these, these type of scriptures that we're reading, you know, are good, you know, to meditate upon because what you're starting to see amongst a bunch of other Israelite camps is that they're becoming afraid. Yeah. That's why you're starting to see a lot of them, you know, begin to change the doctrine up now. Now Esau's the, uh, you know, the, He's the black man. Jacob uh, is the white man. You know, Jacob, the the niggas is hated. You know, Esau's love. All the bunch of bullshit because these these Jakes are scared. Yeah. But we understand that that fear is, is not going to you know really be in our mind because we got the scriptures to prove to you that Yahweh by Shemuel is going to raise up a standard for his elect. So all these you know these these suckers out here tucking tucking their tail and, and hiding and trying to cake for Esau. That's going to be to their detriment. If I can get this real quick, this is uh, Sirach chapter 2, verse 12. It says, Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that go of two ways. That's right. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. Because you don't think that when Esau comes with this persecution, that the Lord is going to be able to deliver you. You people are scared to death, man. That's ultimately what that's coming down to. You, you're scared of Esau, man. All right, but we understand all right, what gives us comfort is that Esau is only allowed to do as much as the Lord allows him to, man. All right, so when you have that in mind, that should bring you comfort, all right? If the Lord is the one in control, man. This man is only going to do what he's allowed to do, all right? Like how I told uh, uh, Pontius Pilate, matter of fact, if I can get that real quick. Um. This is John 19 and 10 and 11. I'm reading to the NLT. Because as, you know, when you read up, you know, Pilate was trying to, you know, ask your Halashah questions and your Halashah wouldn't answer them. And cool. so Pilate had told him, like, look, do you not know I have the power to, you know, release you or crucify you? And then this was your Halashah response. So this is John 19 and 10. Why don't you talk to me, Pilate demanded, don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? Then Yahusha said, you would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. Come. So that so the one who handed me over to you has greater sin. All right. So that's that's how we understand that Yahusha, it's like Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, all right. He's the one that we should fear because he he's the one that has the power to truly, you know, save you or destroy you. All right. And that uh -huh. all these judgments that we're talking about, as far as, you know, the death penalty, you know, certain Jake's going to get fucked up. That's going to be more so for them. Like I said, I always remember that video of Possible Bar did a long time ago when that was on 34, when he was saying, you know, don't fear the guillotines and all the other, you know, judgment the Lord has out there. That's for the wicked of our people, man. Mm -hmm. That's not for the righteous. You know, so if we're doing what the Lord commanded of us, we're going to be delivered from all that. And, and if it is our lot to die, all right, the Lord is going, is going to honor that death, man. That's, that's going to be an honorable death. Come. Yeah, if I may, because, uh, you know, this is dealing with Yahweh Shai's persecution, you know, and we're coming to our uh, persecution. And um, Yahweh Shai prayed 
to yeah, you know, the Heavenly Father, you know, for the cup to pass, you know, but for it nevertheless for his will to be done. Right. And uh there's a quote, you know, through the spirit we uh got, it says uh, a prayer is acknowledging that the most high has power over your life. Mm. You know, so when we pray to the Lord, you know, that's us acknowledging that everything is in his hands, everything is controlled by Yah by Shema Shai. And that's uh. why, you know, our apostles <clears throat> always stress for us to pray, you know, that Psalm fifty one, that he take not his Holy Spirit from us. Come. Because it's the Lord that gives us the strength to overcome, you know, persecution, that gives us the strength to overcome during the times of our tribulation, and our faith. So the Lord really is control of everything. You know, we we'll be part. That's why we say Lord's will be part of that number. We're going to overcome. And that's got to be your faith, you know, that, you know, we are going to overcome. We're going to get the victory, you know, but that comes with a very uh, humility, you know, going through the. You know, bearing the indignation of the Lord, right, and having you know, the, you know, uh, ex exalting that gift of faith that we've been given. Yeah, I want you to say it real quick. This is First Peter five and six. Humble yourselves, therefore, <laughs> under the mighty hand of the Alabashim Yahweh Shah, that He may exalt you in due time. I want to read this in the NLT just for the further context. It says, "So humble yourselves under the mighty power of your Alabashim Yahweh Shah, and at that right time." He will lift you up in honor. That's right. So continue to be humble. That's what that's what it's really all about. And during the time of this grace, you know, you have you have men that want to lift themselves up to make a name for themselves in Israel. When it's not time for that, it's a time for exalting the name of Yahweh by Shema and Shai and all that he is going to do for our people, you know, because this uh mercy that the elect are being shown it's going to be talked throughout generations to come you know because scriptures tell us you know at least the days be short and no flesh will be saved that's why we read in psalms 94 you know it's a question shall the throne but throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee right you know are you going to allow this to just continue on and you know are you going to authorize this to come to pass in the earth or are you going to put a stop to it that's right come huh. Come. So going back here, uh, Psalms 94, I'm sorry, Psalms 37 and verse 32, it says the wicked watch of the righteous and seeketh to slay them. You see that? So the elite, you know, of Esau, they're watching the videos as I did a lesson before, you know, the, the FBI, the feds, they watching all the YouTube videos. They got everybody categorized. They know who's who. They know what videos you clicked, what videos you liked. You know, they know everything. So they, Esau is watching and they know who's who, what you believe in, what, you, what your stance is, everything. And they seek to slay you. And going back to the point, man, this is why Trump said what he said about the anti you know what laws to protect those who uh, have the power. Right. As he made mention, here's another article to add on. All right. It's from Rolling Stone. It says Trump plans to bring back firing squads, group execution. If he retakes White House. All right. So this is all in the scriptures, man. All right. Uh, give me Revelation uh, 2 and 10 real quick. Okay. All right. I got it, brother. This is uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, uh, verse 10. And it reads, it says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. And it says, the devil shall pass... Pa uh, cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I shall give thee a crown of life. Right, you should be thrown into prison, be faithful unto death. All right, so this is the spirit, you know. So if, if they put him back into office, you know, this is what he's uh this is what he's calling for, man. And this is all biblical. All right, this is the prophecies. It says the former president wants to expand the use of the death penalty. And expand the federal government's options for carrying out death sentences, man. So this is not a game. So like the elder Yashawamba went into his lesson, you know, the elder uh, Manata Zaba. This is the reason why you see in all these jakes, you know, twist up the doctrine, bug out, you know, uh, you know, stop uh, prophesying against Esau. This is why you're seeing all of this shit, man. Because now, hey, this now is it, it, it's, it's not more. It, it's not a game no more, man. See all the hopping around in the videos and. You know, all the worldly gimmicks, that's not going to suffice. 
right? Now it's like, look, you got to be prepared to, to, to make a hard stance for your how about Shemel Ashad. Let me get a quick precept. And I'm just going to briefly read and we'll, you know, get some more things, you know. And I pray that we're not all over the place, you know, but we just wanted to uh, inform you and also edify you, right? So this is the book of, um, that's in Luke, the ninth chapter, right? So, yeah, this is Luke <clears throat> chapter nine. Let me pull it up on the screen. God. I can right. read it for you. All right, Luke, read Luke 9 and 26 and 27. Saying Luke 9 and 26, for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words of him, it says, I'm going to read from top slot here. It says, for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. And when he shall come in his glory and in his father's and of the holy angels right now we are in the time where look you know you're gonna have many individuals you know become ashamed you know when they start persecuting us and demonize us and and, and esau rose you know you got a lot of jakes that's gonna <clears throat> tap out you know but the lord said whoever's whosoever should be ashamed of me in my words of him shall the son of man be ashamed when he should come in his own glory and in his father so the a hey, the Lord also said that in Matthew, the 10th chapter, I believe it's verses 32 and 33, man, whosoever confesses me, the Lord said he was going to confess, but whosoever deny me, the Lord said he was going to deny you. That's See, right. you got it, bro. <clears throat> Verse 27, but I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of the most high. Right. So. Even though we come into the times of uh, uh, of martyrdom and, and, and persecution and death and those things that are on the table, the Lord also said there'd be some standing here that should not taste the death. So everybody's not going to die. You see? So really it's all determined on Yahweh by Shema Washah, whatever, uh, whatever, you know, your story holds, you know, at the end of the day. But we're, we're, we're praying that we're covered from all of this, uh, all of this uh, destruction that's coming down the pipe here, man. You see that? So um, anyway, I want to add a couple more and then we'll uh, make a few more points to wrap this lesson up. All uh, right. Because Slocky, did you read that article with the, uh, the, the executions? Con, yeah, that's it. The water. Because I so wanted to add to that. I have something else for you on that too. Okay, Con, I'm going to read a paragraph and then you can bring it out. So it says, <clears throat> it says, quote, what do you think of firing squads? That's the question Donald Trump rep repeatedly asked some close associates in the run-up to the 2024 presidential campaign, three people familiar with the situation tell Rolling Stones. And I'll read this one and you grab it. It says, it is not an idle inquiry. The former president, if re-elected, is still committed to expanding the use of the federal death penalty and bringing back banned methods of execution, the sources say. He has even one of the sources recounts mused about television footage of executions including showing condemned prisoners in the final moments of the lives. So he wants to make execution like reality TV. Oh, that's the spirit. Yeah, I had just sent you the article. Huh. They, they, they have uh, actually put that as, the, as another article. That was the thing. Huh. So Heavy. this is it's feeding off of that, what you're just reading, but I'll just read it real quick. Huh. This is off of Ver Verdict Justia. This is written in February 17, 2023. Donald Trump was to use the firing squad, mass execution, and videos to turn execution into reality TV. And once again, we go into Hollywood, all right, that predictive program, and they showed you things like this in movies such as The Hunger Games, man. Right. That's what that was. The Dark Knight mm -hmm. uh, Rises. Yeah. It says, mm -hmm. Donald Trump has long loved the death penalty. It now seems he wants to turn execution into spectacles of cruelty. On February 14th, Rolling Stone reported that if he returned to the White House, Trump has a three-part plan to heighten the drama of state killing. First, he would like to have the federal government use the firing squad, hanging, or even the guillotine when it puts people to death. Second, he thinks it should carry out mass executions by killing many people at one time. Third, he, wants, he would like to film and broadcast at least some of the part of the execution process since Trump measures all things by how well they play on television 
it is not surprising that he will want execution to be made for TV events. Right. This is yep. why 90% of the people are saying that sleazy are, are the problem. Mm-hmm. You know? And people are like, what the hell is up with all of this? You know, they just want to make their money and go home at the end of the day. Right. But the society is breaking down. You right. know, things aren't going to get better. Things aren't. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You know, they're 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 gearing up for this war. Scripts say what? The devil shall come down with great wrath because he know that he have but a short time. And this is already, people are already desensitized to seeing that already. Mm-hmm. Because you go on Instagram, Twitter, different right. internet uh, videos. You can literally watch people be put to death. And people aren't scarred by that anymore. You know, right. so this all goes to show you that, as the brother said, man, the love of many has waxed cold to the point to where this this is this is a, a, a very possible reality where we can literally watch people be put to death. What Esau's been doing this anyway. That's what yeah. fucking uh, 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 the picnics get come from. Those, those were the the televised uh, execution. It just wasn't recorded. Well, there's right. literally videos on the internet of people at Starbucks, you know, getting you know a body, you know. Literally, uh, just getting a coffee and then they get into an argument and someone's just there. People are just looking, just walking away. Yep. You know, everyone's in that spirit. If it does not concern me, <laughs> you know, it's none of my business. Right. Real quick, here's another one. Psalms 56, verse six. It says, "They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps. They wait for my soul." You know, and this is what pretty much these devils are doing right now against us, you know, pretty much in the, in the, in the video, as we talked about, um, you know, Trump has declared war against the prophets, man. God. You know, So times are extremely heavy, man. You know, we just wanted to point that out. You know, that's pretty much what I had. And this is why one more scripture here. You got to put on, you, you got to put on the whole armor. You how about you know, it's yeah. Ephesians six and 10. That's right. And it reads, it says, finally, my brother be strong in the Lord. Yahweh Shema was shy in the power of his might put on the whole armor of Yahweh Shema was shy that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, right? Because he's coming with the shits, right? He's coming full force. He's coming, hey, like the brother said, he about to reach all the way into his bag, man. You know, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Who is that? All right. The elites. All right, the powers that be that run this place, that run the world, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It says again, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yahweh Shemel Shai, that you may be that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, man. So you got to put this is the time that you put on the whole armor of Yahweh Shemel Shai, because we're getting ready to go into a, a, a spiritual war, which is going to turn physical. You see, yeah. man, you know, uh, I have one for you, real quick. This is uh, Wisdom it. of Solomon, the second chapter. And I'm gonna just go right to the point at verse 17. <clears throat> it says, Let us see if his words be true, and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. Oh, sorry, I'll go to 16. You know, you give context. Count. It says, We are esteemed of him as fat, uh, as counterfeits. And abstaining from our ways as from filthiness, he pronounces the end of the just to be blessed and maketh his boast that, that God is his father. God. Right? Which is the main reason why these damn small hats are setting up the stage to come after us, man. Because us saying this is a threat to his empire because he understands the ramifications of the people waking up and seeing who he really is, man. Yeah, if I may add, because we read that you know, count and Judith, that council that, you know, the Ammonites and the Moabites were all having, you know, but when you read down, it, they're like, nah, you know, this, this dude council ain't right. You know, we still need to try to uh, go fight in this war. Right. So that's, you know, the spirit of the Edomites are in today. The heathens don't believe, they, they weren't given the, 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 the fear of Yahweh by Shemal Shai and to acknowledge his heavenly authority that he has upon the earth. They're literally a uh, use as instruments to bring uh, all things, the Lord create all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Right. Oh. So this is, you know, brothers going into it. This, this has to come to pass. It's, this is, it's on their spirit to bring this out. This is literally Romans 9 and 17. 
Esau is having his heart or harder, just like the Lord did Pharaoh, so that the Lord can flex on this nigga when he returns, man. Yeah. God. It says, verse 17, let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. And this is why we understand Psalm 17, 13, Esau is the sword of the most high. The Lord is about to use Esau to see who really believes, who really fears the most high more than this man. All right, who, who is the true believers of Yahweh by Shemel Shah? And Esau is going to be the main catalyst to show that, which is why we brought up earlier all you scary ass Jake out here that's that's beginning to damn switch up the doctrine because they're afraid. Right. That's it, it says, excuse me, it says, let us examine him. Oh, verse 18, sorry. Okay. For if he, for if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemy. So, it's almost like they're trying the most high's hand. All right. And that's why we have to hold our faith until the end to no matter what situation we'll find, we gotta believe that Yahweh by Shema is gonna come through in the end. All right. Esau <laughs> wants he wants to prove he wants to make us prove our faith, man. Okay. Yeah, because um Esau is really tracking everything that the prophets are doing via these phones. He's seeing what type of information you're looking up, what you how you spend your time, everything. You know, and we're not perfect. You know, we're fighting in the spirit. You know, so this man thinks, you know, through our flaws that he's going to, he, he sees some type of chink in the armor. Mm -hmm. But he don't know what's on the minds of the elect. He don't know what kind of spirit the Lord really has within us. You know, the power that's within. And it's going to be brought forth, you know, as we're continuing to uh, cultivate that power. Right. Sure. You know, through our trials and tribulations. Con said, let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his own saying, he shall be respected. Now, does this not coincide with what we just read, with Trump talking about making the, the uh, executions uh, reality TV? Because that's exactly what they did to the prophets of old, or the disciples of old, all right, in the Coliseums, man. All right, all the believers in Yahweh Bashim Yahshua back then, they put him in the Coliseum to pretty much watch him die, man. So Esau wants to do that all over again, man. Which shows you once again that Trump is Nero because that was one of Nero's favorite pastimes was to go and watch the gladiators fight to death, man. Yeah, that's the spirit. Matter of fact, let me read that real quick, you know, you know, just real fast. I had pulled some information on that and I came across this, <clears throat> which I thought was pretty. Pretty informative here, but it says uh, this the six startling similarities between Donald Trump and Roman Emperor Nero. Right. It says when history repeats itself from ancient Rome to the White House, man. <laughs> Ain't that, that's the spirit, man. Right. Hold Ecclesiastes. Um, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, you know, dealing with reincarnation. Right. Or is Ecclesiastes the first chapter? I'm, right? I'm about to get it for you. I think it's one and nine. God. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, reading on here, so it says, former American President Donald Trump requires no introduction. Trump definitely left his mark on, on contemporary history. On the other hand, Roman Emperor Nero requires a bit of introduction unless you are a Roman history ge a geek, right? So let's jump down. It says, one of, the last, one of the last thing missed about Nero is that he set Rome on fire and played the Lyrae while watching his capital burn down. It says, there is an expression that Nero fiddled with while Rome burned, that the meaning of the expression is that Nero was an effectual leader in the times of crisis. As we just talked about, that cult of personality, everybody's believing in that he's the guy to, to, get, it, you know, to get it together, right? So it says, who was Roman Emperor Nero, right? It says, and I'm just going to read down to the to the last paragraph here, but it says Emperor Nero reigned almost 2000 years ago from 54 AD to 68 AD. He was the fifth Roman emperor. He ruled an enormous Roman empire and was an emperor and he held absolute power. Nero came to power 54 AD after his mother Agrippa the younger, the younger fed her husband Emperor Claudius poisonous mushrooms. Claudius died and Nero became emperor. <clears throat> it says throughout his reign, Nero spent the state budget lavishly on himself. In 64, two-thirds of Rome burned down in a nine-day-long fire. 
<clears throat> Nero used the clear land to build himself an enormous palace, Domus Aurea. He blamed Christians for the fire and started the first, the first persecution against the Christians, which were Israelites, right? This is what he did back then. And the same thing is being done now, as we saw in the video, right? And, and, and through the spirit, you know, he's doing that over again because who was he blaming America's downfall on? The prophets of doom. Yep. That's right. It says in 66 AD, a full scale revolt occurred in Judea. Nero sent elderly Roman general Vespasian to crush the rebellion, going back to the siege of Jerusalem, 70 AD. Right. And then the the the, the rest reads on. We're not going to read all of this, you know, but um, I want to make one more point. Um, I read it earlier. Bear with me. It says the Roman Emperor Nero was in, it was infamous infamous for his persecution of political opponents. He also blamed minorities, especially Christians, for the Great Fire in Rome. All right. Um. Yeah, this point right here, megalomania. I just want to read this, giving you some of the uh, similarities, right? But it says here, just jumping down, and we'll get back to the scriptures. But it says, um. Oh, yeah, no, Salak, your flamboyant personalities. This is what I wanted to read. So it says Nero thought highly of himself. He believed that he was a great athlete and a great musician. He even he when he competed in great in Greek Olympic Games, they always proclaimed him a winner. Even on occasion, he when he had been thrown from his chariot and left the race, he won the argument that he would have finished the first if he had stayed in the race. It says here Nero forces audiences to listen to painstaking recitals of his poems. The guest tried everything human, hum, humanly possible to avoid attending his self-absorbed events. Future Emperor Vespasian almost lost his head for falling asleep during one of Nero's musical events. And then it brings it brings the uh, parallels here. It says, before running for president, Trump participated in public spectacles, including TV award shows and WWE wrestling matches, right? Because he was a reality TV star, Right. Trump was also involved in a failed effort to launch a second professional American football league in the U.S., USF, USFL in the 1980s, right? So, like the scriptures say, read that, I can, uh Ecclesiastes real quick. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that have been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is spirits are recycled. Everything is is reincarnated. Read on. <clears throat> uh, it says that there is. Uh, I'll skip down to verse eleven. Time. It says there is no remembrance for former things, of former things. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that will come with those that shall come after. Try it. You can break it down. <clears throat> oh, so that like we're getting into you know reincarnation everything is reincarnated everything is uh repeating because the same spirits are coming back once again so lucky let me actually read to him okay come. it says is there anything whereof it may be said see this is new mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it have been already of old time which was before us there is no remembrance of former things <laughs> yeah. neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after that's right. So is, is there anything that we can say is this is new? No, it's just this is being repeated. Yeah. You know, history is repeating itself. Heathen nations are coming against the believers of, you know, the, the nation of Israel, you know, which were the Israel of the Most High in these times, the remnant, the Lord has left a small remnant that would not bow down the knee to the image of all. Right. You know, well, no, I was going to say, as we read in, you know, this man is, you know, just in past times brought, you know, coming pers uh, persecution upon the church. And, hey, and it very, it's just all speculation, as we keep saying, you know, this very well could happen again. Yeah, these, these are the same spirits coming back in the same lot, man. You know, we, we can always, you know, use the parallels as, like I said, speculation to see, okay, this possibly could be this person coming back. Huh. Their, their actions are you know just further kind of proving what we're what we're saying to show you this this you can't ignore it this is this is obvious man mm -hmm. you know the, 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 it adds up too well man you know yeah
I got, I got, I got, you know, yeah, precept right One now. more, yeah. Come. Daniel 12 and 13. It says, But go thy way to the envy, but thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the day. So, this is what the Lord told Daniel, but this applies to everybody on the planet. All right. Hey, you, hey, you have the elect in their lot. All right. The wicked, they're in their lot. The heathen, everybody is in the lot. The Lord created them to be in these last days, man. So, we're playing out our roles, man. All right, everybody, like, you know, you have that Shakespeare quote, the world is a stage and we're all just merely players. Okay. This is the Lord's theater. That's right. <laughs> and it's been thousand years for us, but it's been, you know, a few days for the Lord, you know? That's why uh, we're all we're all dealing with the mercies of Yahweh by Shema Shah. We're under the, you know, it's all according to the Lord. And I got this priest of all, I'm going to read this. This is uh, St. Luke 14, 27. Whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. That's right. So we, you know, as standing in our lot in the last day, it's where the prophet is subject to the prophets. We've been given a duty, you know, to stand up against uh, Esau, Edom, you know, and to prophesy against Mount Seir. And the Lord is telling us to put on the whole armor of the Most High. Right, you can't be a uh, lacking in any department of what the Spirit needs to thrive. You know, to be able to fight off the trickery that this man has. So we're going to be needing uh, applied faith to our lives. We're going to, with faith with actions, right? We're going to be needing uh, prayer. We're going to need uh, to be doing the work, you know, to be fellowshipping, you know, to interverse with the body of Yahweh by Shema Shai. These things are needed to overcome and get the victory. Come on, brother. Come on. Uh, Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, just one more verse. Verse Come. 28. For which of you intending to build a tower sit down not first and count the cost whether he has sufficient uh, to finish it? You know, I like to bring out that uh, with Thanos, you know, they show you at the end of that movie, the first one. Oh, yeah. Infinity War. Infinity War. And, um, and he, the, his, uh, his daughter, you know, when she was a child at the very ending of the movie, she's like, oh, what did it cost? And he said, everything. You know, so if you're not willing to put everything you have here on the line, you know, you're not going to get the victory. Because that's what a lot of these guys, you know, in Israel are seeming, seeming to be acting. They're, 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 they're afraid to lose the stat, little status that they have. And more importantly, you're afraid to lose your life. Scriptures tell us to strive for the truth death. unto death and the Lord shall fight for thee. Come. You know, so that's the spirit and mindset the, the elect would have, and we gotta be uh, building up that 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 now, right? Come, on. Come on. I want to just finish out these last two paragraphs here. The point it says Donald uses fear and, and anger as propaganda tools, right? It's the same thing that Nero did. It says Nero was a master of, of propaganda, all right. But it says, for example, Trump often portrays immigrants and politi political opponents as a threat to ordinary Americans. It says Nero accused Christians of starting a great fire in Rome in 64 AD. They were seen as a threat to the stability of the empire. Similarly, Trump has called immigrants a threat to national security, right? So those are the parallels, but it's the point, you know, the, the Israel of the most high is really the threat to this man's, you know, current empire, man. So it's all spiritual, man. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so that's why we, I just wanted to read, you know, this quick article, you know, just hit them points just to show you the similarities between Trump and Nero. You know, it's all spiritual at the end of the day, man. So um, that's pretty much it, man. Um, you know, one more scripture here, Acts 14 and 22, it says confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorted, exhorting them to continue in the faith that we that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Yahweh Shemel Shai. So. This is what we're exhor exhorting the true believers in Yahweh Shemel Shai that through much tribulation is how we're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, man. So all these things are coming down to the wire as we display throughout this lesson, man. All right, you brothers and sisters out there, you get it. All right, things are getting real heavy, real fast. All right. And, um, you know, we just wanted to inform you all, you know, the possibility going back to what we went through earlier. The possibility of, of war hitting the streets, mayhem, possibility the elections not happening, Trump getting in, maybe, you know, getting in or not getting in, 
So it's all on the table here, man. So let's just, you know, continue to pay attention going in, you know, to these next six months, you know, and see what happens, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. So, um, you know, we'll leave it like that unless your brothers had anything else, you know. Wow. Right. So, hey, you know, we pray that you, uh, brothers and sisters out there, were informed and also edified, man. So we're going to close out by giving all the praise and honor and glory to Yahweh Hashem Hey, double honors. To the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth, double salutations to all you Akim out there laboring in the house of David, the elect, that's pushing this word with all truth, righteousness, righteousness, and sincerity. A hey, shalom to you, brothers. Shalom. Shalom to the elect. Shalom.